Hey, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jared and I've got Braxton behind the camera. He's gonna help me today. We're gonna work on this Yamaha TTR 110. This is an air-cooled kids motorcycle. So if you have a youth rider at home and you have a bike in the garage, or if you just bought a used one, these are the things that I would recommend doing to that bike before you get ready for the next riding season. We just bought this bike used. We don't know the history of it. So we're gonna go through it so that way we know whenever we go to hit that start button, it's gonna start and take off like we want it to. This is not expensive to do. You're probably gonna have a little bit of money in oil. I'm gonna say under $100 in doing this. This is gonna be oil. We're gonna do a spark plug to it. This one, the electric start is not doing great. It's uh, so it needs a new battery. And then I just have some cleaners. So there's really not a lot of money being spent. One thing, if you are buying the bike used is to maybe look for the owner's manual. Luckily the previous owner had the owner's manual. And one of the cool things is, is they have some little uh, markers in here, which means they actually went through this and they actually took care of the bike. So that's always a cool thing to look for if they've actually been using the manual. If it's brand new sealed in the bag and they've never opened it, who knows? But we found a really good deal. It's a really clean bike, but we've, we've gone through a ton of bikes in the past and we want to make sure it's, it's clean and ready to go. So let's jump into it. The most important thing to do to these little motorcycles being air cooled is just to change the engine oil in them. They're easy to do. They'll run forever as long as you take care of the engine. So to check the engine oil, you want to keep the motorcycle in an upright position. You want to start the bike and run it for a few minutes. So if the exhaust is hot, you don't want to touch that. So to check the oil, most of these little kids bikes, and it doesn't matter if it's a Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, they all have a dipstick. So if you just pull the dipstick out and you check it on there, you can see how dirty this oil is. It's really black and it probably hasn't been changed in a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this loose. We'll set it back in there and let's get the oil changed. On the Yamaha TTR 110 engines, the drain plug is on the shifter side and it's right up under here. This is a 12 millimeter socket. So Braxton's gonna hold the camera and I'm gonna get up in here. We're just gonna crack this loose first. There's gonna be a torque setting when you put this bolt back in. You never wanna do it too hard. Um, you can strip it out and that's not a good thing for the bottom of the engine. So you can tell as it gets looser, you gotta get your fingers ready to move them out of the way because oil should come pouring out here. And we don't know what it's like. You can see how dark that is. Definitely needed to be changed. So we're gonna let this oil drain for a second and we're gonna clean up our drain plug. I also wanna make note that to drain, when you're draining the oil, you wanna rock the bike back and forth a few times. You can see now that we're leaning it, we're getting a lot more oil out. Sometimes there's a cavity up in the engine and you just wanna rock it back and forth. To make sure you get the most oil out of the engine. With the oil fully drained, it's always a good idea to come in here with a rag and just clean up around the drain plug, make sure there's no dirt and debris. We wanna make sure it's perfectly clean. And we also cleaned our drain plug. And if your crush washer looks bad, it's it's right here. Uh, it's hard to get it to separate there, but if the crush washer was bad, we'd recommend replacing that. This one's in good shape. So we're gonna put this back in now and we're gonna torque it. Uh, every manual's gonna have a different number. This one happened to be 15 foot pounds. It's not gonna be a super high number. They don't want you to, to wreck the side of the engine case. So we're gonna put this back in at 15 foot pounds. Our drain plug has been reinstalled and torqued. We just pull our dipstick out. It's already pretty clean from before. We're just gonna set it down. And what's cool about the Yamaha bikes and, and a lot of the Japanese bikes, the, the major brands, it'll tell you the amount of oil that goes back in right next to the fill plug. This one's 800 cc's of oil. And also if you had your owner's manual and you were following along in your oil change process, it'll tell you right there as well. And it also tells you what kind of oil to use. We like to use the Motul brand oil here at the dealership. It's easy because all we do is we just pull the top of this and plow it on it. And now it's turned into a little spout so it's gonna be a lot easier for us to pour this in. So, and also on the mow tool, it tells you how much oil is left. So we need 800 cc's there's a thousand in here. So we're gonna stop when we get to the 200 mark. My recommendation is always to stop a little bit sooner. You don't wanna go to the full 800 cc's right off the bat because there might've been a little bit of oil that did not drain. So my recommendation is to do like 750 cc's if it calls for 800. Take the bike outside, start it, run it for a minute, get it in the upright position, and then you'll check your oil once you get it outside. And you might need to top it off with just a little bit of the remainder. So we stopped a little bit early, and I think that's a great idea. And then uh, that way you don't overfill the oil compartment. The next thing we're gonna do is change the spark plug in this bike. It's like a $4 item, so it's totally worth doing. All you're gonna do is pull the cap off the spark plug. 
On the air-cooled bikes, it's always nice because it's super easy to get to right off the side of the engine here. You'll find it underneath the spark plug cap. And to take the new one out of the packaging, it's always a good idea to check the end gap. Right in the bottom of the spark plug here, there's the electrode. And if this rod is pushed down, it won't make the spark that it needs to. They come with a protective cap on there to keep that from getting hit during shipping and doesn't it doesn't close that. So it's called the spark plug gap. This one looks good to me. We're not going to check it with the feeler gauges. And as long as at home, as long as yours is not sealed off, I think you're totally fine. So I'm going to set this back down. We'll take the old one out. Another side note with the spark plug is if you bought this bike used, it's a really, really good idea to go to the manual and find out what spark plug is supposed to be in the bike. There's been so many trade-ins that come into the shop here where people just randomly put whatever spark plug nap I had in it that was close, but I've, I'm a huge fan of having exactly the plug that the manufacturer calls for. So when you're tightening these spark plugs, just kind of go until it's tight. They have a crush washer on the bottom of the spark plug here, and that's what pinches it and holds it tight against the cylinder. So as you're tightening, you'll feel it when you hit that crush washer, and then just go until it's tight again. So right there, it's nice and tight, and we're just gonna put our spark plug cap back on. A big thing that nobody really ever checks is the air filters. We had a couple other little uh, kids bikes come in last summer, and they were just totally soaked. Maybe when they washed the bike, they got it wet, and that's really not good for the engine. So on the Yamaha, the air box is right here. You can always find it. So we find the carburetor first, we follow the, the tube over, and that comes right into this box right here. The easiest way to get to this air box, and we could do it without fully removing this panel, but for demonstration purposes for you guys, we're gonna take this side panel off, that way you can see the whole air box. And to do that, we gotta take the seat off. We have two 10 millimeter bolts on either side. That'll let the seat come off, and then that'll let me get to the upper bolts on this panel. So I'm gonna do that for demonstration. But if I was in the garage with the kids, I would probably just take a small Phillips head screwdriver, knock the three bolts out, their um, top, bottom, and then the back side. So let's take this apart real quick for you guys so you guys can get a clear uh, picture of what we're doing here. So now that we got our side panels off, we can easily see the air box and the three Phillips head screws that are holding it on. My recommendation is you want to have a really good sized Phillips screw when you're doing this, the bigger size. If you have this smaller one, you're going to strip these out and it'll round the bolts off. So if you don't have a bigger Phillips head screwdriver at home, it might be worth going to get one because it fits in there really nice and it's going to create a nice tight feel. That way we're not uh, stripping these out. They're not hard to replace. They're um, at the hardware store, you can pick up these little bolts if you need to. That's a nice Phillips head um, screw there. With the three bolts removed, we can just pull out on the cover and we'll see what we have in here. So this one's got a couple of vent tubes that are also holding it down. I'm going to pull the spark plug cap back off as well. So we can tuck it off to the side. So this one's in really good shape. This is a nice clean air box. I was kind of thinking so with how clean the whole bike is in general, that there wasn't going to be a lot in here, but sometimes you have to be careful. We got to take this apart, look for water, look for um, grass, any kind of debris. And you also want to look for like deterioration. If this filter was starting to deteriorate, it would have holes in it. And then we're letting dirt straight into the air box. You can see though, there is a little bit of dirt here on the back side because our air is coming in. Uh, up top here so the air is coming straight in from this hole and so anything that's in here is laying in here so you can see that we do need to clean this out there is some stuff in there so right now we'll take some cleaner and we're going to clean this out a cleaner that works really good for this is called starting fluid it doesn't hurt the air box because this is typically where it gets squirted anyway and it dries clean and it's a really good cleaner so we're just going to put some on our rag and we're just going to rub it around in here and get the dirt out of here these air boxes also have a little water catch on the back side and the bottom here. So how this works is if there was water that got in here, it would drain down to this lowest point and go in this clear tube on the back side. So if you come over here and look at it, and it's good maybe as a parent once in a while to check this, you just pull this off on the outside and that will let the water drain out without actually having to take the whole air box apart. So I know my son Suzuki, his DRZ has the same thing. And I know a lot of the major Jap brands do. So. We're going to clean this really good. That way I can kind of keep an eye on it. As he's riding it, 
If this ever had water build up inside of this, we know that water got in the air box and it worked its way down into here. And that means we need to take it apart and clean it. So now that we got this cleaned up and cleared out, it's going to be a lot easier for me to keep track of this. If the kids are riding, I can just kind of peek down. If it's a rainy day and I'm worried about water being in the air box, I can keep an eye on that. So if you guys didn't know, keep an eye on that at home. It's a cool little tool. This air filter is in great shape, so I'm not going to replace it. If it was uh, dirty or it was deteriorating, we would replace them. They're super cheap. They're like $10 to $15 to grab a new air filter. Highly recommended. But this one's really clean. This little screen here is a spark arrester. So if the machine backfired and uh, it spit fire out of that carburetor, this would block that from catching anything on fire. So it's a good idea to leave that in there. And uh, so now we're just going to take our air filter, put it back on the pins, and we'll close our air box back up. The next thing we're going to service is the battery. It's underneath this side panel and we know it's bad. If we turn the key on here and we hit the button, you can hear that. The battery doesn't have enough power to, to get through the system. So sometimes you can get away with charging these little batteries. I, typically it doesn't work out for me. I don't ever see that working. They're so inexpensive. These are usually like $30 or so. And the problem with these little kids bikes is they might get ridden a lot right at the beginning of the summer. And then as the summer wears on, they get ridden less and less. And without being ridden a lot, the batteries can go soft because they are such a small battery. So I already had the seat off because we did that air filter service on that side. So to take this side pin off, there was that one bolt that was holding the seat on. And there's going to be one more bolt up here in the front. We're going to take that off. And again, this goes the same for pretty much all the brands of these little kids bikes. They're all going to have the battery They're typically under the side panel. My son's little Suzuki is the same way. Once that bolt is out, we have a rubber grommet on the bottom back corner. So two bolts and one grommet, and that's gonna give us the battery box here. With the side panel removed, we can see our battery. It's got the connector here, and how these batteries are held in is with the rubber strap. And if we go to the top, we just kinda of pull out on it. You can pull it out past this clip. Just kinda of go up with it here, and slide it up and out and around. We're just gonna let it hang down there out of the way. And now we're going to take this battery and pull it out. It's got a rubber boot it sits in to keep it from vibrating. We can rock it out and we're going to disconnect it from the connector. To disconnect that, we just pushed down on here and it released it out of the battery. So we want to transfer this rubber booty over to the new battery because it's going to keep it from vibrating inside that little air bo or, uh, battery box there. I like to use dielectric grease when I'm putting electrical components back together. So we're going to take a little bit and squirt it in here. Dielectric grease is really good for keeping moisture and corrosion away from connectors. So if we can put grease in there instead of water, that's always a great thing. So we're going to take our new battery, put it right inside the container here, and then we're going to slide it right in. Make sure that connection is nice and tight. You can see the dielectric grease coming off the side there. So we're going to slide the battery back in and get our strap up and over the top. And so now our battery's back in place. Let's try it. Let's see. So let's turn the key on here. Key is on. That's cool. Starts right up. So all we're going to do now is put our side panel back on. These kids bikes usually end up sitting quite a bit in the off season and we don't always drain the gas like we should. My, my recommendation is to try to get as much gas out of the gas tanks as you can. On the other side, there is the fuel petcock. You can always pull the hose off the fuel petcock and let the gas drain out. That way you know you get it all. But if you don't, it's always a good idea to put some fuel treatment in the gas tank. This is called K100. It also, it's, it's also a cleaner, so it'll help clean the carburetor and keep that cleaned out because these poor little bikes, if they sit, they do get gummed up. I've had some bikes come into the shop here where the carburetor is just full of like green sludge. And that's that's not gonna let the bike run right at all. So if if it is sitting for a long time, you might need to clean the full carburetor, which is a different video, a different topic. But my recommendation is to go to the to the power sports store local to you and get some either K100 or just ask for gas treatment. This will do up to 16 gallons, so it doesn't need to be a lot. You just take your gas cap, you unscrew it, and you just dump a little bit in. This one bike has roughly a little over a gallon in it. So this would do 16 fills. So we're just going to crack the top here and just pour a little bit in. And then that way, as we run the bike, this will flush through it. It'll help clean the fuel system, but also help keep that gas from deteriorating inside of the gas tank. 
One of the more important things that's considered a wear item on these bikes is the chain and sprockets. It's usually on the left hand side of the bike and we're going to look for play and in your manual it'll tell you specifically what this bike should have in every model that you own. So there's going to be a certain amount of free play that this chain's allowed to have on the bottom. If it's too loose the chain can come through and skip on top of the sprocket and it'll wear the sprocket out prematurely. And to adjust that we just have the adjusters back here. We would loosen the rear wheel the axle nut in the middle and we would pull the on the adjuster and it would sneak this back further and you can see there's different adjustments there on both sides so you'd want to adjust it evenly so if this was loose to us we would loosen our jam nuts loosen this wheel and then tighten against the jam nut and that would pull this whole wheel backwards and tighten this chain this bike is going to get that snow bike kit and so we are not gonna we're not going to worry about doing this to our bike in particular but it is a good idea to look up in there. That front sprocket is in really good shape. This chain is within spec. I would not worry about tightening this. And that rear sprocket has a lot of life left on it still. So there are certain cases where these sprockets will wear out and you do need to replace these. All tires will lose pressure over time. It's a great idea to check for the little guy who rides it. If it's too low on air pressure, he'll pinch the tube and pop it. And then you gotta replace the tube inside of the tire. Not always the funnest thing to do on kid sized tires. So. What we did is we unscrewed the valve stem cap off of the valve stem there. So we take this off and Braxton's going to hold this here. And we have a tool. It's pretty cool. It's connected right to our air hose and it's got an end on it. You don't have to have something this fancy to check tire pressure. As soon as I plugged it in, it came up and it tells us this has 20 PSI, which is, which is really high for a kid's bike. We could probably let some out, probably go down to like 15 or even less because little guys don't need um, a ton of air pressure that way they get maximum traction so I would have it somewhere around 15 for him to ride it if adults were going to get on this bike I would pump it back up because as adults get heavier we don't want to hurt it so check your tire pressure that'll save you a lot of frustration as the kid wants to ride so our last bit of advice is just to go around and do a general check on the bike before the little guy rides it you always want to grab the brake handles make sure the brake feels good roll the bike forward in, on in the garage or in the driveway and just grab the brake make sure it has feel to it if the brake isn't grabbing that's not safe for him to take off on make sure the steering stem bearings all everything feels tight and safe if it's really hard to turn the bike we need it might need to replace the bearings and the steering stem so keep that in mind you always want to rock the rear wheel make sure and the front wheel to make sure that the wheel bearings aren't loose or bad inside of here the cool thing with these kids air cooled bikes is this stuff rarely fails it usually lasts a long time. You want to shake the front tire as well, but ours is currently stuck in the in the holder here, so it's harder to do. And then we want to check the rear brake. Just push down on the pedal. Again, push it down the driveway. Make sure that all feels tight. And then there's just some maintenance stuff you can do. This is called Shine and Go. It's it just keeps the plastics nice and clean and uh, shiny. So if you want the, if the little guy is excited about his bike and you want him to maintain it. You can spray some of this on the plastics. You can wipe it off with a rag. It'll really make it look good. We also have the chain wax, which we didn't really talk about when we did the chain adjust a second ago. My recommendation is after you wash the bike, you want to dry the chain and then spray some chain lube on it. That'll keep the chain from rusting. So the longer you can keep that chain uh, healthy, the, the better it'll last for the little guy to ride it. And then grease. If you guys are taking the wheels apart, if you're taking these little bushings apart on the side, it's always a great idea to take some grease, pack it back in there behind the seals and the bearings. It'll make that stuff all last a lot longer. We hope you guys found this video helpful. These are just really cool tips to help the little guy enjoy the summer. I'm a huge fan of kids riding dirt bikes, so I'm always excited when they can go outside and hit that start button and it works. If they walk out, they hit that button and it doesn't work, they might go back inside and play their Game Boy, and I'm not a huge fan of that. So. Thanks for following along. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel. We do a ton of riding and uh, fun videos, so thanks for watching.